Hey guys, so this week is gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna see me on a few different days because I'm trialing flutes and I wanted to give you guys kind of an insight into the process and how I end up deciding if I do decide. Um, this is beginning, this is starting at the beginning of the, of the week. Um, and just kind of talking you through the process of trialing flutes and finding a backup flute as well because that's kind of a very specific type of trialing because you're trying to emulate a flute that is much more expensive and that's an interesting process as well. So um, I have four flutes on loan from Carolyn Nussbaum Music Company. If you don't know who they are, they are a flute dealer and repair shop and just general flute center in Dallas, Texas. Um, I bought my head joint from them in 2015 and so when I was doing this I thought of them as a option to trial from because I knew they would ship uh, to the Midwest even though they're in Texas and I think that's awesome um, and they had everything I wanted so it was a great opportunity to work with them again uh, and so I have as I said I have four flutes they are all offset G which for those of you who know me and know my playing is unusual because I play inline flutes um, I've played inline flutes since my first professional model open hole and that's something that I am going to continue to do. However, a lot of dealers don't carry inline flutes because they aren't as popular right now. So they would be carrying inventory, they're not necessarily going to move, and especially with flutes like this where there are a bunch of different models and they aren't super expensive, but they are still quite an investment. It makes no sense to have both models on hand. The offset flutes are more likely to sell, so they're gonna stock those, and if someone wants an inline flute, they can always order it. So what I'm gonna do is try these flutes with the offset G key. They were very nice and put plugs in them for me, so I don't have to like figure out how to play offset while also trialing these flutes. Um, and if I do like any of them, they'll order an inline version for me. Um, once I return these ones. So that's incredible of them. I'm really excited to be able to do that and also try these, at least the same models. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen, I did a brief unboxing video where I just kinda like talk about the flutes a little bit. I'm gonna go through them again in this video, but if you're interested in my initial impressions and some of my rambling and a shot of my knee, um, <laughs> go check out that video, I'll link it in the cards. Uh, so. I have an Amadeus by Haynes 700 series. That one is a sterling silver head joint made by Haynes. It's the Haynes classic cut head joint and an Amadeus sterling silver body. Um, it's the mechanism silver plated, which is really common on these kinds of flutes. B foot, offset G, C sharp trill. Um, all of these flutes have a C sharp trill because my flute is a C sharp trill. So it makes sense to continue to have that. Um, the next one is the Izumi AZ3. Um, that one is sterling silver head joint made by Altus, and then the Azumi body, it is also sterling silver body, uh, silver plated mechanism, B foot, offset G, C sharp trill. Then I have a Pearl 795, sterling silver head joint and body, uh, it's silver plated mechanism, B foot, C sharp trill, offset G, D sharp roller, and a split E. So that one's a fully loaded flute. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one I have is a Yamaha 500 series. This particular one is the 577, though I would be buying a 584 or 587, whatever their model number that's in line is now. Um, that one is sterling silver head joint, but a silver plated body and keys. Um, it is a B foot offset, a G, C sharp trill, and split E. So I had someone ask me why I don't want why I didn't want to try flutes that have a split E or I'm concerned about trying flutes that have a split E and that's mainly because a lot of makers don't make inline flutes with a split E mechanism. Mine doesn't have one, I don't want to get used to it, I don't want to have to have that difference between the two of them. So while I'm trying some flutes that come with a split E because they come standard on the offset models, I'm going to try to ignore that part of it. Um, which I, having tried them already, I don't see that much of a difference, but who knows in a few days when I've played them a little bit more. So there's that. Um, why did I pick these flutes? Why these four? So Amadeus by Haynes is Haynes' like secondary brand. They're machine-made bodies with a Haynes handmade head joint. And for those of you who know my playing, I play on a Haynes body. 
I don't play on a head Hanes head joint. I do still have my old Hanes head joint, but I play on a Dana Sheridan like custom made head joint. So that one is a little bit similar to what I play. Um, and I did enjoy playing the Hanes when I did play a full Hanes. So I thought at least the mechanism will be similar. And it's a brand that I know and trust and I thought it couldn't hurt to try it essentially. Azumi is Altus's similar brand. Like this, the way Amadeus is to Hanes, Azumi is to Altus. I like Altus. I think they're an incredible maker. I have an Altus alto flute. Um, I really, really love that flute. And so I went, hey, I like that instrument. I've liked everything I've tried from Altus in the past at conventions and things like that. Why not? I'm kind of prone to liking the Japanese maker's mechanism more than I am the American's mechanism, apart from Hanes, but everyone complains that Hanes are really heavy, like their keys are very heavy, but I like that. So obviously I want to stay as true to the flute that I play professionally as possible so that if I do have to play it in a situation, uh, an emergency situation or something like that, I'm not suddenly getting used to this in instrument I don't play very often. Um, the Pearl. It was kind of a, an instrument in my price range with a maker that I like, and I like their piccolos. I've really never played their flutes a lot, um, but I thought it would be interesting to try, and it can't hurt. Uh, and again, I like what they put out, so why not try it? And finally, the Yamaha is because I used to play Yamaha flutes. Um, I played a 687 for about five years from high school into college um, and I only stopped playing it because I kind of outgrew it professionally but it was a good instrument and as a backup flute and as something that I'm not playing consistently I think it would be a good thing. Um, the reason I didn't go with the 600 series is it was too expensive essentially. Um, the Yamaha flutes have skyrocketed in price since we bought mine um, and but that was also in 2008 so the markets changed a lot since then um, I think all flutes are more expensive now and so I figured the 500 series is only a few things different I'm not crazy about the silver plated body um, but if it turns out to be the best instrument for me that is what it is uh, it is a backup flute it isn't my primary instrument um, that's another thing is like I want it to be as good as possible I want it to be as close as possible as my flute, but my flutes also a handmade sterling silver instrument so it's never none of these are ever going to Live up to that one in terms of Quality and everything like that like it's a better flute. That's just the long and the short of it But I do want to find something that I can play that feels like playing that one Again, so in emergency situations or if I'm traveling or something like that and don't want to travel with the really expensive one, I can travel with an instrument that's pretty much equivalent. What I'm also going to do is try my head joint on these flutes because since this was an aftermarket purchase essentially, like I bought this flute in 2012 and I bought the head joint in 2015, I have the ability to switch things around. So if my flute's out for service or there's something wrong with it, I can't play it. If I can put my head joint on the backup instrument and it sounds good and it plays well, I that's a lot easier because I've played that head joint for a very long time and I've spent a lot of time figuring out its intricacies and its quirks. So yeah, um, I'm gonna be talking about this on social media a lot so by the time this video comes out you might even know where I ended up, um, but I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Hey guys, so today is Sunday, so this is the first day I'm really trying out the flutes. Yesterday I just kind of played them each once and got kind of an idea of what the difficulties I'm going to encounter with them are. Um, and then today I'm going to do a little bit more of that and tomorrow I'm going to really test them because I'll have more time to practice. Um, I'm sorry for the background noise. Uh, my air conditioning has to be on right now. It is way too hot in my apartment to function or try these flutes or like expose them to this heat. So, uh, yeah, sorry. So this one is the Pearl 795. Um, I think it's the one I'm the least comfortable with. I don't think it sounds like me. Um, and I like the key work. I really like how it feels so far. I just don't like how it responds to me. 
Um, and that's a big deal, obviously. It's not something I'm really enjoying playing right now. to work. Um. Practicing on one or the other is going to change the way I play something, and that's not great. Um. So this one's the Izumi. Um, trying them yesterday, this is the one I'm actually the most excited about, which is really interesting because I wasn't entirely expecting that. I think it's incredibly responsive. I'm really, really happy with how it feels. And I think the key work is really nice. I'm not wild about the thumb key shape, but like that's a really little thing in the grand scheme of things if everything else is working out for me. This is the one, one of the ones without a split E, and I am finding it easier to play. Uh, play the E's and play the things that the split E is supposed to help with. So that's really interesting for me because I don't ever play with a split E, um, and that's something that I'm finding really different. But also, like, that's hard because I play a gold content flute with, a, and this is all silver, so it's hard. What I'm going to do tomorrow is try them with my head joint and see what it does, too. Because I know on all silver, I have a very bright sound. This is the Yamaha. Um, it's definitely the most comfortable to play because I'm used to this flute, essentially. Um, but I think the head joint is, again, the issue. And it, that's, that's the thing that concerns me the most, is, like, I don't play 
anything except my flute. I don't play my anything except my head joint. So I know it's going to take a little bit of getting used to no matter what, but I don't want to make a bad decision and things like that. So this one has a much darker sound, actually. And actually what I was noticing is my Yamaha had a not great low range, um, and I think this one has a really nice one. My only concern about this flute is that it's a plated body, and that's like not great. <laughs> Um, all the other ones are sterling silver bodies, so there's that, too. Okay, so this is the last one. This is the Amadeus by Haynes. Um, this one actually surprised me in that, like, the keywork is very different from the Haynes keywork. Um, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, I feel like it's a lot flatter, uh, but meh, it's not that much different than the other, other ones. I just was expecting it to be a little bit more like my Haynes. Granted, my Haynes was also made so five years ago now, six years ago now, so things have changed since then too. Ooh, it has a really nice low range. I keep making that mistake. <laughs> that passage has never felt better <laughs> on any of those flutes, so. <laughs> I still, this is really hard. I like its sound though. I really want to try it with my head joint. That's for tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's Monday now. Um, I know I said I was going to try all of the flutes with my head joint, but it only fits on the pearl. So that's the only one I can try it on. Um, so that is something to keep in mind that the head joint I'm getting is the head joint I have to play it with which is unfortunate. Um, it looks like if I didn't have this head joint taped up to fit the body of my flute, it would fit fine. Um, and it's possible that on the inline models that I'm gonna get, the barrel will be slightly different sized and it'll fit. Um, though because they're machine made, chances are that's not true. Um, so that is a detriment, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, this is the head joint for my professional model flute it's not necessarily going to be something that I can take with me. So it is what it is, I guess. It does make this flute sound a lot nicer in my ear. Um, But 
I truthfully don't think it is good enough to justify buying this flute, especially since with its other head joint, I really don't like it. And I feel like the bars of the, the rods are in a different place than most other flute I've ever played, and they don't fit the way my fingers. Like, my fingers are a little flatter than most people's are, mainly because my, my fingers are so long for my hands, and I feel like I'm hitting the rods, which is not something I've ever experienced. Um, I just, it's not my favorite instrument at all, and I don't think putting my head joint on it justifies the purchase necessarily, because it's not what I'm always going to be playing it on. Um, so I think I'm at the point where the pearl can go. Um, like, I don't think I want to continue trying it. I think it's a good instrument, just not for me. Um, it's a beautiful flute, and it clearly is well made and everything like that. I just don't like it that much. <laughs> so I think this is me saying I can officially rule out the pearl. Okay, so now I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna do the Mendelssohn Scherzo, and I'm gonna do it like eight times. Um, but basically, I'm gonna try each of the flutes, but in between, I'm gonna play this one. So I have an idea of what I'm hearing uh, versus what this one sounds like. Because I think what I'm struggling with right now is like between the three of them, I can probably decide which one I like the best. But depending on, like, I'm comparing it to this. So I need some sort of idea of what I'm looking for sonically. Okay, this is the Azumi. <laughs> This is the Yamaha. is the Amadeus. conclusions that I come to. Obviously I didn't like the pearl, uh, it just didn't suit me, the keys didn't suit the way I play, and I didn't like how I sounded, and even people who don't know flute and don't know my playing as well really noticed that. Um, one of the things that was really telling for me was that uh, I tried the pearl first, 
and my boyfriend was in the room and then I started playing the other three and he goes, those ones sound more like you. And well, he's heard me play a ton of times and he knows my playing, obviously. He isn't a musician and he doesn't know flute as well as obviously I do, but he could still hear that very distinct difference. And that was pretty telling, obviously. Um, the Yamaha, I think, is a good instrument as well. It is, however, more expensive than the other three. Not that much more expensive, but enough that it was for a flute that isn't sterling silver and more expensive. Do I really want to go there, essentially? Um, and I liked it. I thought it was an easy, fun to play instrument, but it just wasn't that much better that I would pay more money for an instrument that isn't sterling silver. I think that's essentially the that was its downfall was it wasn't sterling and the other three were so then we have the Amadeus by Haynes and the Izumi and I think overall those two were equivalent instruments in my brain the key work on the Amadeus was kind of hit or miss for me and my initial reservations about the Haynes head joint I think stayed true I don't play my Haynes head joint anymore and there's a reason for that, and so there's something to be said about not playing that head joint anymore and not playing a different one uh, when I'm away from this, this instrument. So, well, it's a great instrument and I like really did enjoy it, and had I not had the Izumi in front of me, I probably would have picked that one. I, in the end, ordered the Izumi. Um, I do have to wait for it to come because they were special ordering an inline flute for me because I, after like four days of playing offset, even with the plugs, it's starting to hurt my hands and I obviously don't want to do that. Also, I want to be able to transition really, really smoothly between the instruments and there's no reason to not special order the inline flute when that's what I play. There's no extra cost to me or anything like that. So it's really not worth buying the offset flute just because it's in front of me. This is not an instrument that I need immediately. It's not something that I need like tomorrow. It's something that I've been putting off buying for years. I can wait whatever amount of time it's gonna take for the best flute for me to get here. Um, so yeah, I think this was a really enlightening process for me. I haven't tried flutes in a very long time and not since I've been a real professional and working in music and knowing more about my playing. Um, when I bought my uh, professional instrument, I was in undergrad and hadn't really tried professional flutes before. And so it was a really different process this time because I kind of knew what I was looking for. And I also felt I was able to follow my instincts a little bit better because I trusted them more. Overall, when you're looking for a backup instrument, I think it's really important to talk, think about what you play already and what's important to you and what's important to carry over. For me, I have a C-sharp trill. I wouldn't necessarily want to practice on an instrument that doesn't have a C-sharp trill. I play inline. That one's an easy win. Think about the things that you have on your flute that you wouldn't want to practice without. If you have a D-sharp roller on your professional instrument and you don't necessarily have one on your backup instrument, that's not a huge deal, but if it's a big deal to you, then obviously go with a flute that has a D-sharp roller. Um, if you have a split E, you probably want to continue having that split E because it's going to be a different process to play an instrument that doesn't have one. So think about what you have on your professional flute and what you love about your professional flute and what's easy to play on it and make sure that that carries into the backup instrument. It's obviously not going to be the same. It can't be, but it's definitely important to get as close as possible. And for me, ease of playing was incredibly important. I think what won me over on the Izumi is that every time I picked it up, I sounded good and I liked how I sounded. While I won't necessarily sound the same on both instruments, I still feel like I can pick it up, play a few notes, and feel comfortable playing it. And that's really, really important for me because of all of the, like, essentially session work that I do. I don't get a lot of time to practice necessarily if I'm doing a 52 weeks or a 365 style thing and I do a lot of subbing so I don't necessarily have time to do that either. So it's really important that I have a flute that will just do what I want immediately and I don't have to fight to warm up on it because sometimes I don't have that luxury unfortunately. So yeah, I hope this video was interesting. I know it was a really long one. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. That's what this video was going to be. It's why it took me so long to put up and everything like that. Um, if you are looking at buying a flute, it's definitely worthwhile trialing. Um, 
it's definitely worthwhile not necessarily even picking the first flute that you get to trial uh, do do your research and really have people help you and have people listen and take notes and yeah I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you're new here, subscribe. If you want to support me more, check out my Patreon, and I will see you guys next week.